On an assignment for the World Conservation Society, biologist Simon Mahoud sets out from Kompong Fluke for the flooded forest, the most unusual ecosystem throughout the whole of Tonle Sap. Covered in water for several months of the year, this remarkable forest is able to survive thanks to vegetation equally well adapted to life underwater as in the air. It's an ecosystem that used to cover 10,000 square meters, but now only a fraction of that still remains, making it all the more precious. The Tonle Sap supports a huge area of flooded forest, about 300 kilometers square. There are only four or five species of trees able to survive these harsh conditions of the drought and the flood every year. At this period of the year, the most interesting specimens are to be found under the water. Have you got one? Yes. Yes, this is it. This is the only tree that photosynthesizes underwater in the Tonle Sap. Barringtonia acuta gulara. This is incredible. This tree doesn't lose its leaves, even when it is inundated by water for five whole months. The fish swim amongst its branches and may take food off the leaves. The tree also produces flowers and fruit underwater. And so the flowers are pollinated by fish and the seeds are dispersed by fish also. It's amazing. And uh, the Barringtonia is incredibly important for local people. It has shiny, waxy leaves. Local people pick them and put them in salads and soups. The roots of the tree have also traditionally been used to treat malaria and other diseases. Most of the trees around us, and indeed most of the trees in the Tonle Sap, are the um, Barringtonia trees. But this tree close to us here, this is the um, Gyrospirum cambodianum. This is an incredibly important tree for the water birds. This tree grows very tall. It makes a safe place to rear their young. And it's the reason why there are so many storks, pelicans, and darters in the Tonle Sap. This nurturing forest, which is as much a nursery for fish as it is for birds, is an incredible boon for lakeside biodiversity. Wet forests like this are very rare in Asia today. So important and unique is this freshwater mangrove swamp that UNESCO classified it as a biosphere reserve in 1997. The birds know that during the high water period, the treetops provide a safe haven. During this season, ornithologist Sun Vizal visits his feathered protégés almost every day. We'll try over there. Over there. The Prectol Reserve is a bird sanctuary born of a collaboration between French Association Osmos and the Wildlife Conservation Society. Hello. The park rangers are almost all former poachers. Perched high in the Barringtonia treetops like the birds they observe, Sun Vizal's team keep 30 or so platforms permanently manned. Okay, let's look at the data. A zero means a youngster that survived to adulthood, is that right? Yes. So in all that makes 4,012 birds and 400 nests. The constant surveillance of the nests has considerably reduced the poaching of the eggs. In order to get a closer look, San Vizalis had special observation platforms made. The raft has to be maneuvered by oar and positioned with extreme care. And then there might be a long wait of several hours before the birds dare to return to their nests. 
It's Tonle Sap's hydrological cycle which gives the whole region such a rich biodiversity. The fish get all the food they need in the lake. And it's because of the fish that the birds nest and lay their eggs here. Because of the abundance of fish, the lake attracts certain species of birds that are going extinct all over Southeast Asia. They spend six months here, time enough for them to reproduce. That's the reserve of the black-bellied darters. We also call them snake birds. They're a species threatened with extinction around the world. In 2002, there were only 250 couples left. But today, in 2014, their population has increased to 7,000 couples, and the number is still growing. The reserve is unique in Southeast Asia. There are so many of them that they completely cover the trees. It's amazing. <laughs> But this constant surveillance of the birds is not enough. Some effort must be made to involve the local people in their protection. San Vizal knows that school children from the surrounding villages will make excellent spokespersons for his cause. What does the red poster show? The birds of Tonle Sap that are under threat. Who can show me the egret? Have you ever seen one or eaten one? No. <laughs> By initiating the lake's children into the practice of bird watching, San Bizal hopes to make them understand the importance of preserving Tonle Sap's rare species. Darters, storks, ibises, and herons will soon take to the skies once again on their migratory journey. They won't return to Prek Tol for several months. Every year, dozens of bird species, including some that are now extremely rare, find a precious refuge here. In May, several months after the second reversal of the water flow, Tonle Sap has reached its lowest level. During this season, a large number of fishing birds concentrate in the last stretches of forest that are still flooded. The heat causes short-lived showers, which attract fish to the surface in search of insects. They are easy prey for the pelicans and egrets, the only species of bird that still haven't migrated. Simon Mahoud is back at his favorite spot, the bird reserve at Prektual. He's come to take over from his colleague, San Vizal, and draw up a provisional report on their actions here. The flood waters are low and all of the trees are visible above the surface of the water now. It's completely different to when we were here at the height of the flood season in November. Huge numbers of birds come to the dry season streams in Prechtwell at the end of the breeding season. This is the only place where the water remains, and so the fish are concentrated here. The water is very shallow, and so it's easy to catch fish. Big numbers of oriental darters and cormorants take advantage of these fish, and they feed up before flying off across Asia. It's incredible that one lake 
has got such a range between high flood and low flood season. And it's this that allows so many different bird species to breed here. In this way, the Tolnay sap is unique in the world and, and very special in my heart because there is nowhere on earth like this and no more special place that we could have protected such huge numbers of birds to the benefit of everybody in the region. For how much longer can Tonle Sap go on playing its protective role? 